Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, a consultant audiologist and director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the wax kit. And here we have a patient who attended with, I wouldn't say fully occluding earwax, because as you may have just seen, there is an opening at the roof of the ear canal. But I would classify this as a grade three earwax impaction, so approximately between 50 and 75% blocked. And interestingly, in this ear, they have a T-tube fitted and you'll see um, that once I remove the impaction. So a T-tube is a ventilation tube and it's more of a long-term grommet. So in the UK, I'm guessing it's different uh, different parts of the world, but your normal standard grommet, um, so I think in the UK actually you call them the shah grommets more specifically, I mean they get different variations, but they are typically more short-lasting. They can uh, be retained uh, within the eardrum for between six to 12 months. Again, well, my auntie's had uh, shah grommets and she's had them for several years now, so they haven't fallen out. But typically the, the standard grommets naturally migrate away from the eardrum and then uh, they sit on the surface of the skin that lines the ear canal. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, the skin that lines the ear canal, it laterally migrates from the deepest region of the ear canal to the entrance, so it's like a conveyor belt. So this grommet is naturally transported out of the ear. Sometimes when we examine people's ears, these grommets are loose or they're impacted with wax, so we, we remove it ourselves. But the T-tube grommets are typically referred to as long-term grommets. So they're there um, in some cases for the rest of someone's life. So this patient had standard grommets fitted previously, but they kept falling out within a couple of weeks. So the ENT surgeon decided to fit the T-tube and it's been there for a couple of years now. And the reason why this patient had grommets or ventilation tube fitted is because they've got chronic blockage of their eustachian tube. The eustachian tube is a narrow orifice which connects the middle ear, so the cavity behind the eardrum to the back of the nose, the nasopharynx. And the function of the eustachian tube is to equalize the middle ear air pressure. We want the air pressure behind the eardrum, as you can see on screen there. And there's that T-tube, um, the blue ventilation tube. We want the air pressure in the middle ear to be equal or equivalent, more or less, to the atmospheric air pressure, so the air pressure in the ear canal. And when the air pressure is equal either side of the eardrum, that's when the eardrum is at its most mobile. And when the eardrum is at its most mobile, you're going to have the greatest amount of vibrations when the sound waves hit the eardrum. And these sound waves are then um, mechanically transported, so they cause the eardrum to vibrate. And these vibrations are transmitted to the three middle ear bones, the ossicles, also known as the malleus, incus and stapes. And the stapes bone, which is the smallest bone in the body, is connected to... Um, a region of the organ of hearing called the oval window. So the organ of hearing is called the cochlea. And the oval window is almost, if you like, the entrance. So when that stapes bone vibrates, it causes uh, changes in fluid um, that's contained in the cochlea. And this fluid then travels in waves. And these waves of fluid um, travel over sensory hair cells called outer hair cells. And these hair cells then shear side to side, they contract, and they then produce an electrical impulse, which is transported up the eighth cranial nerve, so the um, auditory nerve, to the brain, um, to the auditory cortex, where it's then um, processed as sound and speech. So the eustachian tube is chronically blocked, and when it's blocked, it means that there's a negative pressure in their middle ear. So the air pressure in the atmosphere is greater than the air pressure in their middle ear, which then causes the eardrum to somewhat collapse or retract or buckle inwards. It's similar to when you're on an aircraft and then you're descending on the aircraft. So you're um, about to land. And when you are descending on the aircraft, the cabin air pressure enters your ear canal and it pushes your eardrum inwards, especially if you have a sudden descent. If it's just a more... Um, a steady descent, a shallower descent, um, so a, less of a gradient, then your eustachian tube may be able to act quick enough to equalise the air pressure. If it's a sudden descent, your eustachian tube can't react quick enough um, and it causes your eardrum to buckle inwards and then 
consequently from that, sometimes what can happen is when you've got um, negative middle ear uh, pressure, all the remaining air in the middle ear gets absorbed by the mucosal skin cells that line the middle ear. And when that uh, residual air gets absorbed, it forces out uh, intracellular fluid from the mucosal cells, uh, cells into the middle ear cleft. And you can develop what we call glue ear or uh, otitis media with effusion. You don't want to get that mistaken for acute otitis media. Acute otitis media is typically secondary to a viral or bacterial infection, um, uh, an upper respiratory tract infection, and this infection then closes. It can either travel up the eustachian tube or cause the eustachian tube to get blocked, and then you get all this prolonged infected discharge that collects in the middle ear cleft. Um, in the case of glue ear, so when there's no upper respiratory tract infection, it's just a simple case of the eustachian tube getting blocked or not being able to open, I should add. The fluid is kind of an amber colour. It's a sterile fluid. It's not typically infected. So I'm just moving on to the left side. So again, this is a grade three earwax impaction. There's a lot of skin there as well. So we're just mopping it up. This is just at the second bent. So I just want to clear this away for the patient. And then in a moment, you'll see the eardrum. In the right ear, there was a bit of dead skin on the floor of the ear canal near the entrance. I was beginning to peel that away, but it began to squeal against my clarinet. So I just decided to leave that. It's not significant. So again, just going to dilate and distend the ear canal. I'm going to straighten it. And this is their left ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.